Hello everyone, I'm Jonas and in this second video on blueprints I will actually be making a bl blueprint as well as adding some movement stuff and talking about delta time um, and other sort of programming concepts. Um, so let's just get it on and um, I've created just a blank folder and I will also create a just right click and add a new blueprint. Um, so you can uh, inherit from a bunch of different classes here but today I'm just going to be using the standard actor um, because it's sort of the blank default. In the next video I will be using a character instead. But in this case let's just make a new actor and name it, uh, I don't know, movement. Um, and as you can see here it gets a small star which means it's not compiled or not saved probably. Um, so if we double click on this new movement blueprint as you can see um, it has a bunch of defaults which is just standard actor defaults and I'll move this over. Um, it has a scene root which is not visible because it's just uh, it's just sort of a default thingy and the graph is completely empty. The construction script obviously has the construction script node uh, that it starts with, but the event graph, which is run on when the game runs, is empty. And in your variables list here, you can see uh, there is the event graph, there is the construction script, and then you have your scene root, which you can actually access. So you can get this, let's see what I mean, and it gets added as an object variable. If you hover over the circle here you can see it's an object scene component and you can um, get various things from this like you can get owner, uh, world scale, world location and things like this. So you can actually interact with the scene root if you want to but in this case we're actually going to do a couple of different things first. Um, so let's just delete that and we go into components because what I tend to start with is adding an arrow uh, to become the root instead, basically just to see where in the world um, where in the world the zero point is. Because as you can see here, when you click this uh, in the class window here, you don't get any sort of um, transformation tools. And if we, I set the location of this to 10, nothing happens because the root is always the uh, the zero point of the blueprint. So if we want to add a uh, let's add a static mesh and I will just go into my other window briefly to find it. Uh, let's go to editor meshes and grab let's grab the cylinder for this one. And then when I have it selected in the content browser window here, I just click the arrow, just like you did in Unreal 3. And boom, we get a editor cylinder. Now, as you can see here, I have the transformation tools or the translation tool. Um, but if I set the static mesh to the root instead, I can't move it around. Uh, and I, so if you just drag and drop, you set the arrow to the root instead. I just prefer having the zero point at the bottom instead of having it uh, in the center of the model. Um, it makes more sense to me but you can obviously choose if you want to uh, have it in the center or not. I'm also um, let's say 0, 128 uh, no wait let's make that 64 and make it 0.5 in each each direction, just a bit, little bit smaller. And there we have it. So that's basically the only setup I'm going to use for this case. We can add some more if you want to. Um, and now if we go into the graph window, you can see we have two variables. You have the static mesh variable, which we can get if we want to, and the arrow. Both of these are uh, basically the same. You can do the same thing that you did to the root component. Um, but we're only going to interact with one of them, which is going to be the base. Because obviously 
the base is down here at the bottom and if we interact with the uh, the static mesh and the arrow they're going to have separate um, separate pivot points um, meaning that depending on what you want to do you can get them to spin very weirdly because this uh, if we spin the arrow uh, it spins at the bottom and if we spin uh, just the mesh it's going to spin around the center so for my sword for instance in my game um, I have just another pivot at the bottom um, so in this case let's do something really simple um, we start with an event uh, and in this case we're just going to use tick and then we're going to add relative uh, location and we just hook them into like every out arrow and every in arrow should basically be connected except for the last one and then the these different thingies are variable inputs so blue is object yellow is a vector and this is a bool which is red uh, and sweep basically just means um, it doesn't teleport from one point to the other uh, it actually hits the points in between at least I think that's what it does I don't use this for anything um, but yeah so let's just go with we want to add a location and in this case uh, my game runs in the y direction as you can see in the bottom here so x is inwards towards the screen z is upwards and y is left and right so let's add I don't know five we compile and then we we drag a blueprint into the game because otherwise we're not going to see anything so let's just put this here and I will also change the X to 192 because that is the plane uh, my game runs on um, it's picked pretty arbitrarily it's just what it happened to be uh, so let's play, play and as you can see the cylinder just runs along nicely doesn't give a crap about anything in the game because um, it actually has collision uh, it's just it just doesn't care because it doesn't react to it um, I can actually go into the collision presets here and you can see it says block all dynamic and in this case the only dynamic object is actually the player um, so let's say it moves at the speed of one instead and we jump in we can actually uh, sort of interact with it in that it's a solid object uh, it just doesn't react to the world or the enemies or anything like that so I can stand on it and I can it sort of blocks the player um, and in this case that's not what we want uh, whatever let's uh, let's have it like that uh, but the problem with this setup um, that just adds uh, location is that it runs straight off of tick now tick runs once every frame meaning that someone who has twice as high frame rate will also have the uh, the cylinder guy moving twice as fast and I'm sure you've played some games like this where you have to turn on v-sync or something like that to get the game to run uh, properly I think both Super Meat Boy and Guacamelee does this uh, it basically runs as fast as it can uh, but we are not going to be lazy like that we're actually going to create a function that uses this delta seconds uh, thing at the bottom um, so let's delete this add relative location uh, we can keep the arrow one because we're going to interact with this instead um, so delta seconds is the time between ticks uh, so if you're running at a frame rate of 20 uh, delta seconds is going to be 1 20th of a second and I use this for all movement in my games or I've just made the one platformer but I would recommend using this uh, all the time the first node in all of my classes is basically uh, setting delta seconds to use in all of the movement so what we're going to do here is we create a new variable by clicking this one we set it to float because the green here is float delta seconds and we'll just 
name this delta type. And then we set this, uh, yeah, as you can see, you can't plug it into this sort of play, um, but you can do it like that. So the first note is setting delta time. And the next one is going to be setting world location. Set world location. And then we just hook that, uh, hook this into the delta time. And then we're going to use the delta time to um, add to the location. Um, and in this case, we're going to use another variable called move speed, just to be able to change the uh, the speed easily without going. Um, like you can obviously make float. You can have a float plugged into uh, this transform here, but this means that every time you want to change uh, change this value, might you might have to go around your blueprint and find every time you use this. So instead, we're just going to use the global variable. Uh, in this case, called move speed, and we have to compile this, and then we set it to not 0 0.03, let's set it to 100. Now, you might say that, oh, it's so high compared to the 5 that I used before, which is true. But we're also going to multiply this by delta time. Um, so delta time, as I said, is going to be a small number. Um, I think you can actually see the... Oh, I don't have it on. But you can actually see your FPS at the top here if you have it toggled. Um, and if you have the value of 100, I only need to run at 20 FPS to get the 5 that I had uh, in the last example. Um, so um, it's going to be... Uh, this value is, can be quite high because you're obviously multiplying it with delta time. So this is the value that we're going to change the position by. Um, but what we have to get is the current position and then we add uh, move speed to that. So we get the arrow. Uh, you can use this one as well. Uh, it's maybe tighter. So we get, as you can see, I'm just typing into the search bar here. I can get world location. Get W is world location. Um, and as you can see, this sort of corresponds to set world location because most of these uh, actor stuff has both a get and a set. And as you can see here, what we get is a float. No, it's a vector made up of three different floats. So what we have to do is we have to break vector, uh, which gives us the X, Y, and Z position. Because if we just took, uh, I can just show you that, we click the plus to get vector plus float and then we add our uh, move speed to this. It's going to move in all three axes as w at once. Um, so as you can see it sort of goes uh, in a really weird direction inwards, uh, which is not what we want. So instead we break the vector into its three different axes, and as I said before, we're going to use the the Y position. So what we do with the X is we just make another vector. Uh, I'll just have to move this a bit to get more space. Um, because what we want to plug into this new location is another vector. So let's just scoot this over, and this is what we want to plug in. X is going to be the same, Z is going to be the same, and to Y, we click the plus button, and we do float plus float, instead of having the vector plus float that I used last time. So we get a plus node, we hook this into Y, and we add the move speed times delta time. And as you can see here, this is what tends to happen with blueprints, is that you have these few nodes that actually do something, and then the rest is just variables and math and logic. Um, 
basically. So in this case I have this sets the delta time value, this sets the world location, and all the rest is just basic math. Uh, so now when I click play, it's going to move along. As it did before, pretty much, um, it has collision, but it obviously doesn't react, like it doesn't do any damage, it can't be killed by the player, um, or anything like that. It just trots along nicely. Oh yeah, I should fix that. The tiny hovering box is actually one of my enemies that I haven't fixed yet. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So it just trots along. Um, and what we can also do is we can set uh, we can set the direction it's moving in. Uh, in this case, in um, we can just create a global variable. If we want to, we can open up the move speed one as well, which sends it to the uh, default panel. We do not want to have delta time be a uh, variable that people can change. Uh, it probably doesn't matter because the first node is just setting it to something else, but just in case, this one should be uh, private. Um, well, it doesn't have to be private, it should work either way. But yeah, moving in two different directions. So we can add another variable, and in this case we're going to have a bool called move right. So if move right is true, we want to move to the right, which is what this does already. But if we want to move to the left, um, we want to multiply this uh, move speed times delta time with negative one. Um, because, uh, yeah, it's going to subtract instead of add, basically. So, depending on my move right at the bottom here, what we want to do is we want to, uh, what's it called? Um, do, 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 math. Um, do, 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 I should probably have written this down. Oh, yeah, here it is. We want to select float. So, if move right is true, what this does, as you can see, if you hover over this node, if pick A is true, A is returned, otherwise B. So, if pick A is true, that is, if move right is true, we want this to be 1. And if move right is false, we want it to be negative 1. And then when we hook this into our uh, multiply node, um, this should basically be working, and then we set move right to um, one of these, and then we go back to the start here. And as you can see here, we have our move speed in the defaults menu, and we have a move right checkbox. So we So it's, oh yeah, it starts as false, that's why I got confused. Move right is true, moves to the right, if move right is false, moves to the left. So that's, whoops. So that's the basic blueprint that I wanted to show off today. Uh, it's It looks quite complicated, but I'm hoping you sort of pick this up as I went along. It's pretty basic stuff, and this is the basic movement that I use for pretty much all of my blueprints, with obviously a bit more logic and, in some cases, different math, but this is enough to just uh, translate an object in one or more directions, because if you want to add uh, movement in more than one direction, obviously you just uh, break Z, for instance, you hit your plus to get another float plus float, and then you connect it to some other math, depending on how much you want to change it. So this has been basic movement and blueprints, as well as delta time. And remember, if you get weird results, always make sure you use delta time for your movements, otherwise you're going to get into really weird problems. 
um, for instance, if you have something going back and forth, uh, if you don't use uh, delta time for anything, it's not going to end up where it started. Um, when I started out with my sword uh, animation, let's call it with air quotes, uh, it basically went forward and then it didn't went, uh, it didn't go all the way back. So each time I pressed it, it gave me some really funky results. So using delta time means you will always get the same result, no matter how fast your computer is or uh, any sort of weird funky stuff. Use use delta time. It's basically the most important part of this video. Um, and breaking vector to get the location, making vector, and then plug it into uh, something that actually does uh, makes your game tick. This has been Jonas and I hope you liked the video.